In this video, you'll learn key math skills to confidently understand and use Excel formulas. These math skills primarily boost your Excel skills, but you'll also find them helpful in other parts of your work and life. Without further ado, let's start with the first math skill you need to master, and that is the order of operations. Let's see it in action, and then you will see what exactly it is. When you have two numbers with the addition sign, like this one here, all you have to do is add the two numbers, right? If the sign is multiplication, you multiply them, and so on. Easy, but what if you have a lot more numbers and a lot more operations in one calculation, like this one here? Here, for example, you have three operations, addition, division, and multiplication, and you have four numbers, six, eight, two, and four. So what do you think the answer is? If you are not familiar with the order of operations, you may come up with different answers depending on which operation you choose to do first, next, and last. For example, if you start the calculation from left and go to the right in order, that means if you first add six and eight, then divide that by two, and finally multiply that by four here, you get 28. On the contrary, if you start from the right and go to the left, you get seven which is obviously different from 28. And there is only one correct answer. That is where the math rule, known as order of operation, comes in. The order of operation rule is a strict math rule specifying what order or sequence we must follow when performing mathematical operations like this one here. You may be familiar with the acronym PEMDAS, which stands for parenthesis, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. That is, the order, or sequence, we must follow to do calculations on mathematical expressions like this one. So, based on the PEMDAS rule, if there is a parenthesis in a mathematical expression, whatever is inside the parenthesis must be calculated first before anything inside the parenthesis interacts with anything outside the parenthesis. Here, we don't have parenthesis for now so we don't have to worry about that. Then, if there are any exponents, they must be done next. The next operations, multiplication and division, have equal priority. So, if you have both multiplication and division, the order goes from left to right. In our example here, we have both multiplication and division. And the division is more to the left than the multiplication. So, we first divide 8 by 2 then multiply the result from that by four. The last two operations in the PEMDAS order are addition and subtraction. Similarly, between the two, whichever comes more to the left is calculated first. In our example here, we don't have subtraction, but we have addition. So all we have to do now is add six to the result of the other operations, which was 16. And that gives us the correct final result, 22. But can you force this calculation to do the addition of 6 and 8 first before 8 is divided by 2? The answer is yes. All you have to do is enclose 6 plus 8 in a parenthesis, like so. So, according to the PEMDAS order of operations, anything inside the parenthesis must be done first. So, here, we have to add 6 and 8 first. That gives us 14. Then 14 is divided by 2 we get seven. That is finally multiplied by four to get a final result of 28, which is different from the result we got when there was no parenthesis. Excel also respects the PEMDAS rule. If you test both expressions with and without parenthesis in Excel, it gives you the results we just proved. Great. The next math rule is the use of variables, which is also an important algebraic concept you need to understand to confidently work with Excel formulas. You may remember variables from your school years. In pure algebra, a variable is a symbol like X or Y that represents a number that can change or is not yet known. From an Excel standpoint, the definition is similar but a bit narrower. So, for Excel, a variable is a symbol that represents a number that can change. That is it. For example, in the expression 3 plus 4, the value of both sides of the addition 3 and 4 
are fixed numbers. That means there is no variable here. But if these values are subject to change, because the calculation might be done for multiple scenarios, we use symbols, usually letters, as placeholders, like x plus y. Let's clarify that with a simple example. Let's say a business sells two products, product A and product B, and the revenue generated from each product varies every day. At any given day, the total revenue generated from both products can be given by A plus B, where A and B represent revenues generated from each product for any given day. In Excel, variables are used in a simple and consistent way. The variables we use in Excel are what we call cell references. But first, what is a cell reference? Well, as you may know, an Excel worksheet is a grid of vertical columns and horizontal rows. The vertical columns have generic names represented by letters such as column A, column B, and so on. Similarly, the horizontal rows also have generic names represented by numbers such as row 1, row 2, and so on. As these columns and rows intersect each other, they form many small boxes. These boxes are called cells. Each cell gets its name from the intersecting column and row. For example, the name or reference of this cell here is D5 because it is in column D and row 5. So we say D5 is the cell reference of this cell, which serves as the name of the cell. Cells are where we enter data like numbers. So, while the name of a cell is represented by its cell reference, like D5 in this example, the value of the cell is whatever the cell is holding, which can easily be changed by replacing it with a new value. You just saw two key properties of a cell, the name or identification of a cell, called cell reference, and the value of the cell, which is the data we enter into the cell and delete from the cell. For example, if you type 100 in the cell here, the cell's value now becomes 100. If you change that to anything, the cell's value is now changed to that new value. Great. Now that you know what cell references and cell values are, let's now see how cell references are used as variables in Excel. In Excel, you'll often need to calculate numbers or values. But no matter how simple or complex the calculation is, you should never use cell values. Example, suppose I want to add revenue A and revenue B to get the total revenue here. If I type the cell values directly like this, sure, I get the total. But here's the problem. If either of those numbers are updated later, my total won't update. It'll just stay stuck on the old result, and that is wrong. Instead, always use cell references, which are basically Excel's version of variables. So, instead of typing the numbers, type A2 plus B2, A2 and B2 being the cell references for these two cells. Or even better, just select the cells directly as you type your calculation. And Excel automatically inserts the cell references for you, like this. Now, you get the total as before. But, most importantly, when you change either cell value, the total updates itself instantly. That's because cell references act like variables. That means they can hold different values at different times. Great. Variables and order of operations are the heart and backbone of Excel formulas. The rest of what you need to know to Excel with Excel formulas is functions. What are functions? Two of the video tutorials on this channel cover Excel functions. The first one is titled, Excel Tutorial for Beginners, Learn the Right Way, covering Excel formulas and functions, among other topics. And the second is titled, Excel for Beginners, Top 5 Formulas You Must Know. If you don't see the links to those videos somewhere on your screen, you can find the links to both videos in the description below. Alternatively, you can head over to the channel and find the videos there. Fantastic! You've just learned the core math concepts that bring precision, efficiency, and confidence to your Excel work. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments, and you'll get answers as quickly as possible. Well, that was it for now. I'll see you on the next topic. Thanks for watching.